Welcome to this fourth episode in the navigation series. Today, I'm going to talk about deep links. Sometimes you want to make it easy for the user to navigate down into a deeper part of your hierarchy in your application without having to launch the application and click, click, click through that hierarchy. For example, maybe you want to make it easy for them to return to an ongoing conversation and messaging app, or you want to make it easy for them to immediately get to a shopping cart form in the middle of a shopping application. You can use deep links to do this, surfacing those links outside of the application in ways like using notifications or shortcuts where they can click on that link and immediately takes them to where they want to go inside of your app. In the donut tracking app, which we've seen in previous episodes, there are a couple of ways that I would like to surface this capability. For example, if I'm having a fantastic donut experience in the wild, I'd like to add new information about that donut. So I'd like to have a shortcut so that I can immediately get to that add donut screen. Or sometimes I've added information and edited information about existing donuts in the application. And I'd like to return to that to continue editing information for the one that I was just editing. I can use two different kinds of deep links for that. I can use an implicit deep link, which always goes to the same static place in the application, or I can use an explicit deep link, which uses a pending intent to get to dynamic content within the application. The navigation component makes both of these types of links easier with UI built into the design tool, as well as APIs built into the library itself. We're gonna use the donut tracking application to show how to create both of these types of links today. Let's start with the implicit deep link to add a new donut to the system. First of all, we need to create the deep link. You can do this in the navigation editor, which is where a lot of the navigation stuff happens. Click on the dialogue destination. So this is the thing that we saw in previous episodes where we enter information about either a new donut or an existing donut in the database. This shows the properties over on the right and you can see I've already created the deep link. Isn't that handy? So if we double click on this, I have entered information in here, which is a URI, Universal Resource Identifier. Note that I have a custom URI in here because I don't want this to get misinterpreted as some web link that brings up a browser on the device. I just want it to go into my application. So I've entered this information here, and now I need to enter it elsewhere in the system to make sure that the build knows how to handle this. But note that this is a deep link that takes us to this destination. Also note that when it gets to this destination, if it does not have an arg associated with it, we will provide a default arg of negative one, which is a trigger inside the system, as we saw in a previous episode, to say, this is a new donut. Please enter information about a new donut into the database. So from here, let's go take a look at the manifest. And we can see I've entered a little bit of special information here, some metadata saying, hey, I have some shortcuts to find. Check out the following file. So if we take a look at that shortcuts file, we can see here is a shortcut. I've got an ID, I've got some information, some text in there. All of the information about what to actually do with that shortcut is embedded in that URI, and the navigation component knows the right thing to do to take us to the appropriate destination within the application. But this is the important part. You'll note that the data here inside the intent uses the same URI that I use in entering the deep link into the navigation graph. So instead of running the application, we can just long click on the application that we've installed and we can see our shortcut right there with the label that we created in that shortcuts metadata file. And then if we click on it, it will take us to that deep link within the application and now we can enter new information about a new exciting donut. So that was implicit deep links. Now let's create an explicit deep link, which will be created dynamically based on the state of the app at runtime. If you're like me, then donuts are really important to you. When I'm entering information about a new donut find, I probably want to take my time with it. So maybe I'll start the entry with some information, but I may want to come back later and enter more when I've had a really good chance to appreciate the experience deeply. I can do this with notifications. When I enter information about a donut, the app will create a notification that makes it easier to get back to that ongoing entry. There's not a lot of code that we have to write here. We basically just need to create a pending intent to get to the right place in our application and create a notification with that pending intent. Most of this happens in donut entry dialog fragment. So let's go to that now. We've seen this code before. This is the code that kicks in when the user clicks the done button, right? So they have finished editing or entering information about a new donut, they click done, and then we save it in the database. But here's the new code. 
So after we enter this information, then we create a notification that goes into the system so that we can get back to that information that they were editing before. So this code is called with the donut ID from the database so that we know we use this as a trigger to get back to the correct data. And we go ahead and create an arg from that. So this is going to be the bundle that gets passed in with navigating to the destination of this dialog. And then we create a pending intent. Uh, and this is an API. This is part of what Navigation Component provides you is a deep link API. So on the navigation controller, you call this create deep link function and you set the destination to this dialog fragment where we're going to continue editing the information. You add the arg to it, you create the pending intent, and you're all set to go. Now all you need to do is post the notification. I created this utility class called notifier, and post notification will create and then post the notification for us. So first of all, we create a builder. Note that we have to call it with a channel ID, uh, and we do this we create this channel ID up here in the init function. Uh, so we already know that the channel ID exists by the time we get here. Then we set some information in there about what text is going to be in that notification. And then we actually create the notification. So we set the text, we set the priority, we set the intent, which is the intent that we passed in, uh, and we go ahead and build the notification. And then we cancel notifications if they exist already. I only want to get back to the latest donut editing process that I'm involved in. I don't want to continue editing all of the donuts that I happen to enter all that day. That would be far too many in the notification panel. So we'll go ahead and cancel any existing notifications before we then go ahead and create the new notification, then that will post on the system and we'll be able to click on that notification and get into it. So if we run the application, we can see that happen. So there is our application. Let's go ahead and create a new donut here. We'll call it Fun Donut. And we'll give it a rating of four because it was pretty good. And now you can see that a notification appeared and we get this ability to click on the deep link. But just to show it really in action, I'm going to go out to the home screen and I can click on the deep link and it immediately takes us to that dialog where we continue editing more information about our donut. In this episode, we learned how to create an implicit deep link, which takes us to a form that allows us to enter new information about a new donut into our system, as well as explicit deep links, which allow us to get back to an editing operation where we were already entering information and we'd like to continue that from a notification. This donut tracking app is getting better and better. It is not as good as a donut, but then nothing is. If you like the video, go ahead and like and share and subscribe to the Android Developers channel on YouTube. Thanks.